Hello everyone, you're watching the channel Stories of Our Life. Friends, make yourselves comfortable. I wish you to truly enjoy listening to this life story. Wow, Esme. What a woman you are today, exclaimed Clara, meeting her friend in the office. How, Esme smiled playfully. I don't even know, happy or something, I'm not even saying dressed up. Clara looked her over from head to toe with a rapturous look and rolled her eyes, I'm sure my husband will appreciate you. You're so beautiful, glowing like a Christmas tree, Clara continued to admire. Thank you, my friend, you know how to cheer up an already good mood, Esme sat down at her desk and opened her diary. No urgent business was coming up, she had purposely cleared tonight to leave a little early, I just did my makeup and styling. Esme smiled, then took her powder out of her bag, put on her lips and looked at her friend, okay, I'm ready, don't want to keep Dante waiting, she smiled embarrassed and put her makeup bag back in her bag. Good luck, girlfriend, Clara winked at her. Esme hoped that this evening, after a romantic dinner with her husband at a restaurant and celebrating their sixth anniversary together, they would continue celebrating in their bedroom and maybe God would finally hear her prayers and she would become a mother. She had many grand plans ahead of her. In the first place was the dream of giving birth to her beloved husband and heir, and then an heiress, or vice versa. The main thing that the children were healthy, and the boy was like his mother and the daughter like her father. After paying the cab driver, Esme confidently went to meet her beloved husband. Climbing up the steps, she opened the door on herself and at the same time an unfamiliar young man opened it on the other side. Not keeping her balance, Esme staggered and almost fell down the steps, but the man was able to get her bearings quickly. He picked her up and helped her to her feet. Careful. You almost knocked me down, her heart raced with fright at the speed of a jet plane, and fireworks of colorful lights flashed before her eyes. Sorry, I didn't do it on purpose, it just happened, the young man smiled guiltily, and after making sure Esme was confidently on her feet, he finally let her go. Thank you very much. It's my own fault, I was just dreaming a little, she muttered as she came to her senses and began to think straight. The stranger looked at her with surprised eyes. Under his gaze Esme felt uncomfortable, like a rabbit being thrown to a boa constrictor. She lowered her eyes in embarrassment, thanked him again, and hurried inside. After a quick glance around the room, she found her husband sitting at a table by the window, with a pensive expression on his face. Hello, my love. Esme exclaimed cheerfully, and reached out to embrace him and kiss him tenderly on the cheek. Sitting down in the chair opposite, she cringed involuntarily at the cold and focused gaze of her husband, as if they had not come to celebrate another anniversary, but awake for the days they had wasted. Esme, we need to have a serious talk, Dante lowered his eyes and broke the silence in a voice that did not bode well. Is something wrong? Are you in trouble at work?" Esme asked cautiously, and pulled out of her bag the gift she had especially bought for her husband for their wedding anniversary. Dante looked at her with serious eyes and sighed heavily. His behavior made Esme uncomfortable, and a chill ran down her back. Her husband had hardly spoken to her in the last few days, constantly solving some urgent business on the phone and asking her not to disturb him. We have to divorce. It happens, I met someone else, he pronounced in the same breath. Esme rounded her eyes, pulled a silly smile on her face and fluttered her eyelashes, well, why aren't you talking, Esme? Do you hear me? We have to get a divorce. I'll prepare the divorce papers myself and file them as soon as possible, we don't have children, so they'll divorce us quickly and without any problems. Esme looked directly into his eyes, trying to catch the facial expressions, hoping to hear if this was a joke or a silly prank. Have you fallen out of love with me? She finally squeezed out, still not believing it was true. Have I been so blind that I haven't noticed anything around me? The thought swirled in her head like a child's merry-go-round. Yes, I have fallen in love with someone else, Dante said confidently, I don't want to hide anything else from you, I'm going to have a baby soon. Each word, like a blade, sliced her body into small pieces. How long have you had this? Esme barely squeezed it out of her. Esme, let's divorce calmly and without hysterics. I'll just leave, I will not claim the apartment, 
Dante continued in a tone that could not tolerate objections, and no longer hiding his eyes. I inherited the apartment, I'll keep it anyway. You and I were saving up for a new one, but as I realized, not for us, she barely squeezed out. Esme, let's not have a fight now, I hope we can do without mutual recriminations and scandals, he muttered grudgingly. I packed my things this morning and will pick them up tomorrow, I just didn't have time today because I was in a hurry to meet you. He looked at her defiantly, trying to show his indifference and superiority. Scandals? As if all I do for you is always make scandals, Esme said with a chuckle, I thought we lived in an idol with you, but now I realize that I was very much mistaken. Dante continued to say something, but Esme could no longer hear him. The pain was poisoning her soul, beating on her ego and mercilessly squeezing her heart. Outwardly she sat calmly, with a straight back, looking at her beloved face and realizing that from that moment her life had changed. It had made a sharp turn and there was no going back. Esme, Dante called out to her, are you even listening to me, he asked irritably. Don't worry, I'll sign the necessary papers, she answered faintly. She felt like getting up and walking away with dignity, but Dante continued to hit the sore spot. If you could have had a baby, things might have been different. After these words, she looked into his eyes with hatred. She felt like giving him a ringing slap for continuing to manipulate her and making excuses for his actions. Thank you for everything, and be happy, she tossed the gift carelessly on the table and headed for the exit of the restaurant. Esme jumped out of the restaurant and ran up the stairs where she had almost fallen just half an hour earlier and started looking for a cab. Her teeth rattled, her heart pounded like a jackhammer, and her whole body shuddered with nervous tension. On autopilot she caught a cab and made her way to her apartment, barely holding back the tears that were choking her. Already at home she opened a bottle of cognac, undressed, and gave vent to her tears. Esme, I got two invitations to the main character's movie presentation, Clara handed her a personalized invitation card. Wow. How did you manage that Esme looked at the ticket in amazement and almost jumped with pleasure, so we're going to get to the screening. Cool. Esme still shuddered as she recalled her failed family life. At work she was somehow distracted from her problems, but at home, in the evenings, her nervous system was failing. She cried into her pillow, tore up pictures, and got rid of things Dante wouldn't pick up. Esme threw them in trash bags, then took them out to the dumpster in the morning. After putting on some bright lipstick and looking at herself in the mirror, Esme was satisfied with her reflection. The cab driver stopped outside the two-story building. After paying the driver, Esme and her friends got out of the car and looked carefully at the signboard and went to the indicated address. They were running a little late and the official part had already passed. The guests, dispersed throughout the hall, gathered in small groups and chatted with each other, discussing the screening of the new picture. Look. Clara nodded her head and adjusted the straps on her dress with a smile. Esme shifted her gaze in that direction and saw Dante, who was standing in an embrace with the spectacular blonde. He had his arms around her waist, and she was smiling and looking at him with a frank look. Esme, seeing this picture, dug her fingers into the champagne glass with all her might and took a sip of the sparkling drink away from them. The couple was so engrossed in each other that they simply didn't notice anyone around them. A young man came up to them, leaned over and began whispering something in the ear of her ex-husband's companion, and then assiduously proved something to Dante. A waiter approached them. The girl, without thinking, took a glass of champagne, took one sip, then another, and then drank the whole glass. Then she called to the waiter again and took a second glass. Dante whispered something in her ear, but the girl didn't like it, twitching her shoulder and pulling her arms out, glancing around the room and defiantly turning away from him. Wow, the pregnant one is about to have her second glass, Clara said with a smirk, let's get closer to them so we can hear what they're talking so nicely about. Lillian, stop embarrassing me already. Let's go home, Dante persuaded her. No, I don't want to, she replies firmly. Will you go? I'm not kidding and I'm giving you one last warning, he begins to get angry. Go to hell, she hisses and looks at him with angry eyes. You piss me off, he pushes her hand with the still full glass of champagne and its contents spill out onto her dress. 
The girl looks at the young man angrily, then lowers her gaze to the dress, on which a wet stain has appeared, darling. Why are you so sloppy with me, Dante says affectionately, in your condition it is not recommended to drink at all. Fuck you, she angrily puts her glass on the waiter's tray, sighs heavily, and walks toward the exit, with Dante following her. He walks past Esme with Clara, their gazes meet, and Dante sizzles Esme with his arrogant gaze. He looks at her with such angry eyes, as if she and not he had asked him for a divorce a month ago. Then he defiantly turns away and walks proudly out the door. Did you see that? What a wife he's got for himself, she won't give him any peace, she's not like you, Clara commented with a chuckle. Taking a sip of champagne, Esme looked at Clara. I hope he's found his happiness, Clara continued with a chuckle. Hello, she heard a voice behind her. She turned around and saw a man who was looking at her with interest and smiling cheekily. Do we know each other? Esme wondered and looked at the man carefully. His face seemed very familiar to her, but she had no way of remembering where she had seen him before. With his hands in his trouser pockets, he stared at her cheekily and smiled. Do you remember me, or need I remind you how I caught you on the stairs? By the way, I may have saved your life, he mumbled with a satisfied smile, and you didn't even thank me. He said in a slightly offended tone as he continued to consider her. How am I supposed to thank you? I thought I told you, thank you, Esme said in surprise and shrugged her shoulders. Perhaps you would agree to have dinner with me in a restaurant? That would be your thanks. The gaze of his brown eyes wandered over her face, and then he frankly and with interest examined the curves of her figure. The stranger smiled cheekily and stared intently at her, as if he were studying every part of her body. Well, why are we silent and our eyes down? Thinking of the best way to go without consequences, he continued to say with a satisfied smile on his face. I don't understand, why should I run away from you? I don't think we've made any commitment to each other, replied Esme with a nonchalant smile. Well, then, let's get acquainted, he held out his hand to her, my name is Miles. Esme, she tentatively extended her hand back to him. Shall we drink to our acquaintance then, the young man suggested. Esme took a sip and suddenly felt sick, a lump came to her throat, she felt dizzy, pale, looked at Clara, and swayed slightly. Esme, what's wrong with you? Are you not well, her friend worried and took her hand. Esme held out her glass to her and, without saying a word, walked quickly toward the exit. With a quick step, she barely made it to the restroom. Lucky there was no one there, she only had time to run into the stall before she threw up. Immediately she felt a little better, but just a few minutes later, she vomited again. There was a small couch nearby, Esme sat down on it and closed her eyes. The door opened and a worried Clara ran in. What happened? You were running at the speed of a space rocket, Clara asked, flapping her false eyelashes and taking a seat next to her friend on the couch. I don't know, I suddenly felt sick, Esme leaned back on the couch and covered her eyes. The canapes we ate together, the champagne might have made me sick, Clara reasoned, maybe you're pregnant. I'm delayed, but I've had that before because of stress when my grandmother died. I thought I was pregnant then, too, but it turned out to be just an irregular cycle, Esme spoke without opening her eyes and sighed heavily. Was there vomiting, too? No, it wasn't then. I think we should stop by the drugstore and get a test, Clara said thoughtfully. You think? Come on, what a silly thing to say. I haven't been able to get pregnant for so many years. I'm not even considering it, replied Esme and waved her hand. How are you feeling? There must be your acquaintance waiting, Clara laughed. He was looking at you with such surprised eyes that I thought he would run after you and not hesitate to run into the ladies' room. She continued to laugh. Oh, Clara, I'm not in the mood for dating right now. Whatever you want, but I'm going home, I feel really bad, Esme pulled her phone out of her purse and ordered a cab. Yes, sorry, of course, but I don't want to stay here alone, I'll go with you, Clara sighed heavily. On the way they asked the cab driver to stop at a drugstore. Esme bought two tests and went to the bathroom first thing at home. The test showed two lines. 
Esme immediately dialed Clara. The test showed that I'm pregnant. Esme muttered in the same breath. What a gift Dante gave you for your wedding anniversary. And what are you going to do? Like what? If everything goes well, I'm going to have a baby. Clara, don't tell anyone anything yet, just in case. They'll find out I'm pregnant, they'll start asking questions, they all know I'm divorced. Anyway, all to one, Esme grinned and gently stroked her still flat tummy. You didn't have to warn me. Okay, go to sleep, mommy to be, rest, Clara challenged. Esme lay on the couch, curled up in a ball for a long time. She remembered her childhood, her college years, then her marriage and her difficult divorce. That's all right, I'll manage somehow. There's still time to think about how to get on with my life and raise a child on my own. Our daddy's not interested anyway, he's about to have a baby with the woman he loves. At 8.50 Esme ran into the office, took the elevator to the sixth floor, and ran into her office. Just as she was about to catch her breath and pretend to be busy with work, Clara came running into the office with her eyes wide open. Esme, she whispered, they say our firm has been sold, and we have a new boss, there will be a reshuffle. You know the new management is making their own rules, Clara shook her head in response and sighed heavily. There will be a meeting in the auditorium at 9.15, the new boss is assembling, she continued to bring Esme up to speed. When Esme and Clara walked into the auditorium Esme and Clara looked at each other and both made surprised faces. Esme lowered her eyes to the floor, and Clara hid behind the head of the chief accountant in front of her. Good afternoon, a voice sounded painfully familiar, my name is Dante. As you already know, I am the new director of the company. I'll tell you right away, there will be a partial replacement of staff, and this will be done gradually, over several months. And then he spent 40 minutes talking about the company's plans for development, about how they will open new branches in other cities. There was ringing silence in the hall, no one uttered a single word or asked a single question. Everyone was released to their jobs. That's the way it is, retorted Clara as they entered the office, had I known your ex-husband would be our director at that ill, faded party, I would have danced in front of him and his new floozy. They say he's requested all the personnel files in human resources, Vera continued in a whisper. You know, girlfriend, I think your lightning-fast divorce had something to do with the principal's chair, I'm just sure of it. Did you see how he acted at the meeting, whispered Clara, looking around to make sure no one inadvertently witnessed their conversation. And how did he behave, asked Esme, in surprise. He did not behave like an employee, but like a full owner. That tells me that someone serious is behind his back, and I think it has something to do with his new wife, Clara continued her musings. Oh, Clara, I don't know what to do now. If I wasn't pregnant, I would have written a letter of resignation today, but now he has to put up with me until maternity leave, his own fault. If he was going to divorce me, he had to protect himself and me somehow, Esme sighed heavily and looked at her friend, hoping to find support in her face, I do not like this situation myself. Do you think it's easy for me to throw away six years of marriage? To this day, when I remember, my heart starts pounding from the wasted time. My soul just breaks into little pieces, Esme sighed and wiped away a tear, let him try to touch me. I'm not going to keep quiet either, I have nothing to lose. Esme continued irritably. That's right, approved her reasoning Clara. After lunch, the secretary invited Esme to the principal's office. You summoned, Esme tried to pull herself together and look indifferent. Come in, answered Dante briefly and pointed to a chair with his hand. A chill ran down Esme's spine. The director was showing with all his appearance that this was not going to be a pleasant conversation. You must have some idea why I invited you here, Dante said without taking his eyes off the papers. No, I can't guess why you invited me, an ordinary employee, to talk to you. All day-to-day -day matters are handled by my immediate supervisor, Esme replied putting on her invisible armor and throwing her leg over her head for the sake of importance. Before I sign your termination order, I decided to talk to you personally and prepare you to start looking for a new job already. Do I make myself clear, he broke away from the papers and looked at Esme. May I know the reason for my dismissal, Esme asked calmly. Don't worry about that, there's always a wording. 
There's always something to fire a man for, said Dante grudgingly, showing that he was not happy about this conversation. I don't understand, you and I are officially divorced, we have nothing in common, you have another wife, you have a baby on the way. Why am I so prejudiced? I don't plan to quit yet, especially since I have my own reasons, Esme replied calmly. May I, as a supervisor, find out those reasons? Yes, please, especially since this reason will soon be impossible to hide. I am pregnant, eight weeks pregnant, and you are the father of the child, Esme said in the same breath, looking closely at her interlocutor and trying to catch his mood. Are you kidding, he squeezed out, breaking the silence. I wouldn't even think of joking, I can get a certificate from the gynecologist if you don't take my word for it, Esme said, praying to all the saints to remain calm. How inconvenient this all is. My wife is pregnant. Why now, when you and I have nothing in common, he gripped his temples and shook his head. The door swung open without a knock and the very confident blonde who had been with him at the show entered the office, tapping her heels. She looked at Esme squeamishly, then shifted her gaze to Dante. What is she doing here, she questioned her husband. Honey, I'll explain it to you in a moment. Esme noticed that at the sight of his Lillian, he almost fell out of his chair. His face stretched and he even began to stammer a little in surprise. You can go to your desk, he turned to Esme and looked at his Lillian in such a way that he was ready to fall to his knees, just so she wouldn't make a scene now. Can you explain to me what she's doing here, began Lillian's interrogation as soon as Esme left the office. Sit down. This is going to be a long conversation. Thank you for not embarrassing me in front of my ex-wife, Dante said on an exhale and pointed his wife to a chair, I understand your hormonal and all that, but try to understand me and please listen calmly. Dante did not withhold from Lillian the information that Esme worked here, and that he could not fire her because she was expecting his child. Okay, Lillian began to digest the information she had received, we have to talk to her father right away. Have his security service find out where she's being seen and the name of the doctor, we need to bribe him right away. Let him diagnose her and send her for an abortion, we don't need any babies out of wedlock, Lillian reasoned aloud to herself. Lillian, are you out of your mind? Yes, I'm not thrilled with the news myself, but can you take the sin, he began, stammering, trying to talk his wife out of it, after all, you knew I was married, you insisted that I get a divorce. I did everything you wanted. You see, it's not even Esme I'm worried about, it's you, you're the one carrying our baby under your heart. You can't take a sin like that, you and I need a healthy baby, he mumbled, looking at his wife with frightened eyes. Don't worry, we won't do everything with our own hands, Lillian waved her hand, sinking into her thoughts. Well, what if the doctor doesn't agree? That's an official offense and we could be in trouble, he was still trying to reason with his wife and talk her out of it. Throw out all unnecessary thoughts from your head and work quietly, she smiled and continued, and remember, there are no such people who do not like money. Every issue has its price, the main thing is not to be too cheap. Okay, dear, in fact, I came to tell you that I booked a table at the restaurant. We need to celebrate your first day of work in your new position, she kissed him gently on the cheek and left the office. Dante sat in his chair and looked at the door his wife had just slammed shut. How could he have come to such a life? He remembered the first time he had seen and met Lillian at a friend's birthday party and he had come alone, without his wife, and there she was, all so bold and beautiful, confident and self-aware. She grabbed all his attention, made him just obey and do all her whims. And he, like a guinea pig with his mouth open and his jaw hanging down, could not look at the object of his adoration. And when he came to his senses and remembered that he was married, it was too late. Meeting dad, bright prospects, the proposal to head the company, but it was necessary to divorce his wife and marry Lillian. Everything had to be done quickly and in the shortest possible time, because Lillian happened to be pregnant. Everything happened so quickly that Dante did not even realize that in all the turmoil he had lost his wife. And now it turned out that Esme was pregnant. Somewhere deep down in his heart he was sorry for what had happened. Why had he gone to that party, which had changed his life completely? Now he would live a quiet and measured life, wait for the birth of the long-awaited baby, and enjoy life. 
As sometimes, I want to get up the courage to send all the hell. Fed up with the scandals, accusations, suspicions. Sometimes, I am even ready to give up on his career and just go away, to run away far away, not to participate in this protracted spectacle. If Esme could forgive, understand, and accept for the sake of the future baby, he would not hesitate to take this desperate step, but knowing his ex-wife, she will never forgive him, and Lillian simply will not let go and will take revenge on Esme and him. The memory of Esme made his heart ache again. It felt like he was tied in a tight knot and it made it impossible to breathe fully, suffocating but continuing to resist. Why had he told Lillian that Esme was expecting a child, now she would not rest until she had done her intended dirty work. We must be sure to warn Esme, and we must do it as soon as possible. What am I going to tell her? No, I'd better talk to Lillian first and try to convince her not to do it, and if she doesn't agree, then I'll warn Esme. Lillian was sitting in her father's office complaining that her beloved husband's ex-wife was keeping them from living in peace. Can you believe it, daddy, she told him today that she's expecting a baby, and it's already two months due. She's stalling on purpose, she wants to have the child, and then she'll spend the rest of her life pulling money out of us. Can you imagine how thoughtful she is, she was indignant, trying to placate her father. Didn't he know she was pregnant when he left her, the father resented. Of course no one knew anything. I tell you she's calculating, replied Lillian, wiping her eyes and sniffling her nose, Daddy, help me, I want her to get rid of the baby. What can I do for you here? It's up to Dante to persuade her, only he can convince her that he doesn't want the baby, the father replied and shrugged his shoulders. Papa, don't you know Dante? He's a softy. No, daddy, I can't rely on him, let's get your security service involved and find out where she's being seen? Let's talk to the doctor, give him money, she began to introduce her plan to her father. Daughter, you're pushing me to a crime, I'm not at war with women. Father sighed heavily and shook his head, okay, I'll give the task to make inquiries, and then we'll see how best to do. Listen, how long are you going to fool Dante with your imaginary pregnancy? The father grinned and looked at his daughter with sly eyes. Dad, we're working on it, if I don't get pregnant within this month, I'll have to fake a miscarriage, Lillian replied in all seriousness. Oh, Lillian, he'll leave you if he finds out you cheated on him, the father voiced his suspicions aloud and tried to set his daughter on the right path. Well, first of all, he won't find out. Secondly, maybe I'll get pregnant soon. Well, I'm a little confused about the timing, the main thing is the end result. She smiled at her father and held up her index finger, Dad, let's not put this issue on hold, time is pressing. We must have time this month to get the girl a medical abortion and fire her. No one will keep her at work either, Lillian reasoned. Don't worry, I'll give the head of security an assignment now. I think within two days we'll solve the issue with the clinic and find out everything about her, and then we'll have to get in touch with her doctor, my father sighed heavily and picked up the phone. In the evening the group went to a restaurant to celebrate my son-in-law's new position. All evening Dante had to pretend to be a happy husband. He smiled sweetly at his wife, but mentally prepared himself for a serious conversation. Lillian pretended not to notice her husband's heavy thoughts. Throughout the evening she complimented him and hinted at the main gift she would give him that night. Knowing his wife's temperament, Dante realized that he would not be able to talk tonight, he would have to reschedule the conversation for tomorrow. The next day, it wasn't until lunchtime that Lillian was able to open her eyes, and when she saw the message from her father, she realized that he had honored her request and figured everything out. Well done, daddy. I always knew I could count on you, Lillian praised her father after reading the information, that's it. All that's left is to convince the doctor and get this Esme out of our lives permanently and irrevocably. I don't want her to get in the way of people's happiness. Hello? Lillian stepped confidently into the gynecologist's office. She had a thick envelope in her purse, and a charming smile shone on her face. Hello, come in, the doctor indicated Lillian to a chair with her hand and continued looking at the monitor herself. Lillian sat down in her chair, threw her leg over her head, opened her bag, and pulled out an envelope, which she silently placed on the table. What is it, the doctor asked, 
tearing herself away from the monitor and raising her eyebrows in surprise. It's money, Lillian replied calmly, defiantly leaning back in her chair and shaking her leg slightly. And how much money did you put in my envelope, she asked in surprise and tilted her head. I think you'll have enough, Lillian smiled. Do you think so, the doctor continued calmly, not stopping to marvel at the young girl's impudence? May I ask what doctors are paid for these days, she asked Lillian in a sarcastic tone. It's nothing to you, Lillian replied with a shrug, and pushed the envelope closer to her. Some insolent person has decided to have my husband's baby. I want you to talk her into an abortion, she smiled her charming smile and tilted her head to better see the joy on the doctor's face. I see, replied doctor briefly, take the money. I don't do this kind of business. I see you for the first time. How do I know, maybe you're provoking me and filming me on a hidden camera. The doctor looked at Lillian point blank and squeaked squeamishly. I have nothing else to do. What the hell kind of provocation? Are you out of your mind? My family is falling apart, began Lillian's indignation, scrutinizing the doctor's badge and trying to read her name. Get out of my office, she replied sternly and stared at the monitor again. Lillian's face stretched as if the doctor had scolded her and slapped her in the face on top of it. Did you just make a joke, she hissed, rounding her eyes to an impossible size. Lillian guessed from the doctor's eloquent look that the deal was not going to happen. This woman would not commit a malfeasance in office even at gunpoint. And she had to run into this old woman with her principles and beliefs. Lillian grinned crookedly and twirled her finger at her temple. Fuck you, she replied angrily, jumped up from her chair, grabbed the envelope and quickly headed for the exit, slammed the door loudly, and jumped out into the hallway. Outside, Lillian stopped, took a breath of fresh air, and calmed down a little. She got in her car and dialed her father's number. Dad, guess what, the doctor refused to take the money. She was afraid of being provoked by me, she said in the same breath, almost crying. That's to be expected, nobody wants to lose their job. Think for yourself with your head, if a stranger came to me and offered me money, I would also suspect him of a trick. Father sighed heavily, do nothing more, or you will ruin everything. I'll see what I can do myself. We can offer Esme many different options, why involve other people? You want to talk to her yourself? asked Lillian in surprise. Yes, I'll talk to her myself today, father sighed heavily and disconnected the phone. Esme came home from work, changed into her home costume, went into the kitchen, and just had time to open the refrigerator when the doorbell rang. She headed tiredly into the hallway. She didn't even have the energy to ask who was there. She opened the door and froze with surprise. Standing on the threshold was the same man she had met at the movie screening. She didn't even remember his name. Esme was speechless from surprise, stretching her lips in an artificial smile. Is that you? she asked in surprise. You left then and didn't even say goodbye. He grinned and shrugged, someone promised to have dinner with me at the restaurant and disappeared, may I come in? Esme silently stepped back from the door and let her guest in. Come in, she replied and pressed her back against the wall. Maybe you can buy me some tea, he asked, trying to lighten the mood, and looked intently into her eyes. Esme sighed heavily. I only have tea in bags, do you drink that? I drink everything, he smiled and began to take off his expensive shoes. Miles took a mug from the table and took a sip of tea and thought for a while deciding where to start the conversation. He set the mug down on the table and looked at Esme guiltily. My daughter married your ex-husband, he sighed heavily. Esme shifted her eyebrows on the bridge of her nose and grinned crookedly. Lillian is your daughter? How old are you? Lillian's mother and I got married almost right after high school. My daughter was born when I just turned 19. My wife and I separated long ago, she married a foreigner and went abroad. I raised my daughter alone, he sighed heavily again and lowered his eyes. And why did you come to me? I think your daughter and my ex-husband's love life is just fine, Esme already regretted letting this man into her apartment. The conversation had become unpleasant to her. 
she suddenly felt like kicking him out and slamming the door behind him, but she looked at her interlocutor with challenge and didn't know what else to talk to him about. My daughter found out that you are expecting a child, he stared at Esme point blank and watched her reaction, think about it, why would you, a young and beautiful girl, have a baby without a husband? I'll make an agreement, we'll put you in a good clinic, have an abortion, we'll solve all your problems. You will have the best specialists at your disposal, I will take care of that personally. Millions of women have abortions, and then quietly get married, have children and live happily ever after. Why would you ruin your life, he paused, wanting to say something else, but after thinking about it, he decided to finish. Esme suddenly felt a small chill. She looked intently into his eyes, folded her arms across her chest, and shook her head. Let me decide for myself whether to have the baby or not, she replied, clearly enunciating each word. We're willing to pay you a decent amount, you can change your apartment, he looked around the kitchen. You can make a good repair in your new apartment, think hard, you have nothing to lose. I understand you and your daughter. I guess if I were you, I wouldn't be very happy to find out that my son-in-law is about to have a baby on the side either, but I'm not having an abortion. It's not my fault that all this happened the moment he decided to leave me and marry your daughter, Esme chose her words carefully. She did not want to quarrel with this man at all, she was well aware that if she wanted him to, he would destroy her and not even leave a wet spot. He would make sure that she did not give birth to her long-awaited child. Esme put her palms on her still flat belly dash, for six years, nothing worked with my husband. And now that we're divorced, I find out I'm pregnant. I'm having this baby for me, Esme looked at Miles with eyes full of tears, how can I kill this little man? I just can't do it. What are you talking about? It's still a set of cells, and nothing more, Miles objected to her and nervously began drumming his fingers on the table. But it's already there, even though it's a set of cells, but I can already feel it inside me. How can I kill him? Esme began to wipe away the tears that were rolling from her eyes with her hand. That's it, just don't cry. I hate women's tears. Miles suddenly felt pity for this defenseless girl who has been so cynically betrayed and abandoned by her husband, and his own daughter trying to hurt and send to an abortion by all means. Somewhere deep down in his heart this situation had hurt him and left a little wound that was now bleeding and making him uncomfortable. And uncomfortable. You understand, I am afraid of you, afraid of your daughter and afraid of your son-in-law, too, Esme spoke up and cried even harder, I take it that I have to walk around. Afraid and waiting for a brick to fall on my head because my child turned out to be unwanted for everyone but me? She went on to say and cry. Calm down and don't be afraid of anything. Let's talk tomorrow, shall we? You'll think hard about my offer and make a final decision, Miles thought a little, what am I doing? I've come here to confront her, and I'm going along with her. He scolded himself in his heart for showing weakness. Would you like some more tea? Esme's voice brought him out of his musings. No, thank you, he replied, will you promise to think carefully, he looked questioningly at Esme. In that case, it would be easier for you to just kill me, because I won't be able to fulfill your request. Excuse me, and if you can, leave me alone, she answered calmly, having cried out all her tears. Miles sighed heavily, smiled crookedly, and rose from his chair. Come on, close the door behind me, he stood up and headed for the exit. My head was just buzzing. I just wanted to walk away so I wouldn't have to see the tears and that deep sadness on her pale face. What a little beastie. It's like she's living inside my head, Miles sat in the car and was angry with himself. His life had long ago been miscalculated several years in advance. He had been building his stability for too long. Something told him that this Esme would give him a lot of trouble, he would have trouble with her and her baby, I should have taken her and taken her to the female doctor myself, and then forgotten and never remembered again. As a matter of fact, there's nothing special about her. She's just a hurting girl who's been dumped by her husband. Why do I show her my weakness? Miles sighed heavily dash, the last thing I need is to take her as my wife and raise my own son-in-law's child. Such thoughts made Miles cringe and spit over his left shoulder three times, just in case. He sat in the car for a while longer. His head was splitting from the problems he was having. 
he didn't want to go home and listen to Lillian's cries. Lillian was waiting impatiently for him at home. As soon as the car pulled into the yard and the automatic gate closed, Miles got out of the car into the fresh air. So, Dad, did you talk? Lillian jumped out of the house and watched her father carefully, trying to figure out the outcome of the conversation by his demeanor. Let's go inside and talk there, he replied and, without looking at his daughter, walked past her. Knowing her father and seeing his bad mood, Lillian prepared herself for a not very pleasant conversation. Dad, come on, don't be quiet. Tell me, did she say yes? No, she didn't say yes. She's going into labor, he answered calmly. What? I don't believe my ears. You're telling me this? Who's going to let her give birth? That's how you decided everything? Thank you, Papa, she bowed theatrically to her father and looked at him with a cold look, say, were you joking? I'm not in the mood for jokes right now, Miles grinned sadly, Esme is not to blame for anything. It's not her fault that your Dante left her and left her a child at the end. Give me your word of honor that you won't bother her again. At any rate, I just won't let you, replied Miles sternly, showing with all his appearance that it was his last word and he wouldn't change his mind. Ha! <laughs> Are you telling me you value her more than my peace of mind?" she squealed, trying to stifle a fit of rage inside her. You better deal with your husband. Why did he sleep with both you and her at the same time? You have to pay for pleasure. Let him pay alimony now, the father went on the offensive. That's not for you to decide, daddy. This is my life, and I will fight for my happiness. And I'm warning you that nobody's going to stop me," she continued to sarcastically squeal and drill him with burning eyes. I warned you, I won't let her get hurt. And God forbid anything happens to her, it will be your fault," he replied and raised his index finger for reassurance. Why don't you make her my stepmother, too, said Lillian grudgingly, and threw her leg over her angrily. Now, that's none of your business. You deal with your own family. You run around with Dante like a hen with an egg. Esme has nothing to do with you, he replied in a tone that could not be objected to, once again, for the hearing impaired, it will be as I say. You know me, you'd better not make me angry, he said as he went on his way to his office. Dante tried all evening to talk to his wife and convince her not to make any attempt to hurt Esme, but Lillian became even more angry and began to provoke him. What, did you miss your ex? Found out she's expecting a baby and decided to go back to her? So go on, run to her. You're babysitting that Esme like two idiots, she replied angrily, glaring at him with a hateful look. Who did you mean? Dante said grudgingly. You and your sweet daddy. He was visiting her yesterday. After he met her he didn't seem to be himself and told her not to touch her. These words made Dante feel uncomfortable. He pretended to be deeply indifferent to what was now going on in Esme's life, but a storm was building up in his soul that was ruthlessly destroying his relationship with his ex-wife forever. Lillian, you're my smart, beautiful girl, why would you want to take revenge on someone, fight, take a sin on your soul? Think of the child you're carrying under your heart, Dante began his moralizing. With a husband like you, carrying a baby for nine months is unrealistic, Lillian quipped. What don't you like about me? I don't think I've ever given you a reason to be jealous, Dante began to justify himself. Yeah, you didn't. You told me you couldn't sleep with your wife, you were always thinking about me, and you made her a baby. It wasn't the wind that blew him away, Lillian couldn't stop anymore, all her thoughts were now occupied with one question, how to get rid of Esme, so as not to meet her again preferably never. Also my father, in my opinion, has fallen specifically in love with her. One thing I don't understand, how can you sympathize with a pregnant woman? He's getting too old. He's out of his mind. There's no other word for this outrage, she said indignantly. Lillian, why don't we forget about this Esme? You're going to be a mother yourself soon and give birth to my son. He put his arm around her shoulders and kissed her tenderly on the temple. Lillian felt like punching her husband in the sore spot. She grinned and continued. Have you ever wondered why you have so many children? 
Do you want to be a hero father? She asked ironically, in short, listen to me and remember. Tomorrow you will invite Esme to the office and discreetly throw a pill in her coffee, better to crush it and put it in a cake. You can do that in advance and give her a treat for old time's sake, nothing more is required of you, she whispered. Lillian, what pill, he rounded his eyes and opened his mouth in surprise. What do you care what pill? An ordinary medicine, she waved her hand. I'm not going to slip anything to anybody, what are you picking on her for? Don't you get it that this is a criminal case? Believe me, she's got enough sense to make a criminal case, Dante flustered, and with undisguised anger, looked at his wife. Well, let's sit back and watch my dear daddy bring up your son, she shouted and twiddled her finger at her temple. What does this have to do with your dad? You've been talking in riddles all evening. Can you explain it to me clearly, said Dante and looked at his wife questioningly. I'll explain, my dad is supposedly in love with your ex-girlfriend. He decided to play caring uncle with her. In a nutshell, your ex has a patron, in the form of my daddy. Now, she grinned, how would you feel if your kid didn't call you daddy, but somebody else's uncle? Dante became uncomfortable. Lillian knows how to push the right levers to then set the whole mechanism in motion. On his way to work, Dante stopped at a coffee shop and bought some pastries. As soon as he entered the office, he immediately warned the secretary not to let anyone come in to see him. Dante took out the pill that Lillian handed him, looked at it, and put it back in his pocket. No, Lillian, I cannot kill my child. No matter how much you talk me into it, I'll never do it. I'd rather eat this pill myself than poison Esme. Esme was called into the principal's office. Come in, sit down, Dante pointed her hand to a chair, how are you feeling, he asked affectionately, and smiled. Why did you summon me, she asked grudgingly. To find out how you're feeling, he smiled again. What do you all want from me? You all swirl around me like annoying wasps. You can't wait to get stung. Stop pulling on me, we are through with you, you got married, what more do you want from me? I'm giving you my last warning, otherwise I'll complain to your wife, she got up from her chair demonstratively, and without asking permission, she went out, I'm fed up with you all, I could fly away from you to the moon, you will probably find me there too, she grinned and slammed the door. Esme was watching television when the bell on the front door rang. She sighed heavily and went to open the door. Why don't you ask who's there he asked Miles instead of greeting her and stepped into the apartment, you won't believe this, but I missed you, he smirked and winked playfully. He walked over to the refrigerator and began unloading groceries from the bag, you need to eat well, he replied to the mute question he read in her eyes. And anyway, if you don't mind, I'll keep you safe and I'll stay overnight at your place tonight on this very couch. What? Esme frowned her eyebrows. That you heard. Let's go cook something better, I'm hungry. Dante sat in his office and looked at the door, which Esme slammed shut. I don't understand anything, is my father-in-law really courting her? If so, he's obviously not right in the head. Doesn't he get enough girls? Yes, and Esme has become more confident, clearly feels protected behind her back, Dante sighed heavily, took his phone out of his pocket and dialed his wife's number. Did you make it? He heard Lillian's voice immediately. I threw your pill down the toilet, there was silence on the phone, if anything happens to the baby, I'll leave you myself. I can't live with that, knowing that the woman I love had a hand in it. Dante closed his eyes and prepared to hear a lot of insults directed at him. Fuck you all, traitors. Thinking only of yourselves. I hate you all, Lillian challenged, well now, darling, my way out. Let's see you make excuses and look me in the eye when you find out I lost the baby. Two hours later Dante called Miles and informed him in a distraught voice that Lillian had lost the baby. It's me, Dante began to say into the phone and faltered. His whole life ran before his eyes in those few seconds, as if he had been plucked from his real life and brought back to his childhood. And from there he no longer wanted to go back to real life. I'll pick her up from the hospital myself and bring her home, his father-in-law dropped the call, and Dante was still staring at the extinguished phone screen. The hands on the clock showed 11.10pm Dante called Lillian, but the number was unavailable. 
His head was a mess, he wanted to get drunk and forget, to get away from the real problems for a while and not to fill his head with them. At the same time Lillian was in an expensive spa and was taking a milk bath. She decided to relax a little, to improve her physical and psychological condition, because in the evening she would cry and blame for all her sins Dante, who now for the rest of his life would not be able to make it up to her. All that's left is to deal with this Esme, Lillian reasoned. She lay with her eyes closed and enjoyed the next procedure. But her brain did not want to shut down, there were thoughts going round and round in her head, all of them related to Esme's pregnancy. At 5 p.m. Miles picked up her daughter from the spa. You don't look worried. You look good, he said with a chuckle, at least don't blab where you spent the day, or your husband must be worried sick, he continued to chuckle without taking his eyes off the road. What am I supposed to look like? All blubbery and unbrushed hair and biting lips, Lillian quipped and looked at her father in surprise, don't worry about me, just tell me what's going on with this Esme? I'm at a loss for ideas. And anyway, Dad, why do we need her? You know I'm not comfortable with all this, Lillian pouted. Lillian, I've been getting sentimental lately. You've come at this girl like a kite. Why are you doing all this, he looked questioningly at his daughter. I'm afraid for you. I'm afraid that you will take this sin upon yourself. Please leave her alone, you stole her husband away from her, live and enjoy life, you have everything for it. Forget about her, don't take this sin on yourself, Miles asked his daughter persuasively. That's easy to say. How can I sleep soundly, knowing that my husband is about to have a baby, grinned Lillian bitterly. How like your mother you are, said Miles and tapped his hand on the steering wheel. Don't touch your mother, replied Lillian. You know, that girl reminded me of me when I was young. When your mother left me and went abroad with her Pierre, it was very hard for me. You were sick all the time, not enough money for anything, but I did not break down, I achieved everything myself. Miles stopped talking and deepened into his memories, maybe you should go to a psychologist? Let a specialist explain to you that you're wrong if you won't listen to me, Miles asked cautiously, breaking the silence. Maybe I will, Lillian replied thoughtfully. Dad, tell me, just honestly, do you like her? I don't know. There's something about her, but it's definitely not love, I just wanted to help, Miles furrowed his brow and sighed heavily. Is there any way you can be more specific? I'm at a loss for ideas. You've gotten kind of secretive. There used to be no secrets between us, Lillian looked at her father and waited for him to answer truthfully. Why would you want that? Miles tried to avoid answering, but Lillian wouldn't budge, she pouted her lips, defiantly turned away and stared out the side window, daughter, don't ask me anything, I don't know why I do it myself, he shrugged, if she wasn't pregnant, I would have started an affair with her long ago, there is something about her, he smiled. Well you see, you answered your own question. This baby doesn't fit in with the rest of our lives. If she gets rid of it, it will only make things easier for everyone," Lillian tried to reason with her father, trying to be more convincing. I've tried to talk her down, she won't agree. I don't want to pressure her, Miles replied calmly and shifted his gaze to his daughter again. I hope I've made myself clear to you? Honestly, I didn't understand anything. Well, if it's so important to you, I won't touch her anymore," Lillian shook her head and rolled her eyes. I only understand one thing. My daddy's going crazy. Maybe you should adopt her already. That would look a lot better than making her my stepmother and mother-in-law to my husband, she grinned inside heavily. When Dante heard the key turn on the front door, he ran into the hallway without hesitation. Lillian was standing near the door, with her hand on her flat stomach. There was a deep sadness on her face, which was immediately transmitted to Dante. He jumped up to his wife, put his arm around her shoulders and pressed her tightly against his chest. He began to gently stroke her head, shoulders, back. He wanted so much to comfort her now, to give her hope, to protect her, to say many affectionate words. How are you? He looked into her eyes, which were glassy with accumulated tears. Dante kissed her temple and, with his index finger, began to gently wipe away the tears that rolled down her cheeks, baby, calm down. You and I will have more children. Everything will be all right, 
he said affectionately and kissed her cheek gently. Lillian could hardly stand on her feet. After the relaxing baths, she just wanted to lie down and rest, so that nobody touched her and did not pester her with their silly questions. Dante picked her up in his arms and carefully carried her into the living room, gently placed her on the couch, covered her with plaid, and sat himself on the edge of the couch. How beautiful you are, he tried to reassure his wife, looking lovingly at her beautiful, well-groomed face. It's all right, Dante. It just came out of the blue. I so wanted to give you a healthy baby, answered Lillian, struggling to get her words out. Baby, it's not the end of the world. You'll definitely give me a son, and then another daughter, he spoke to her as if she were a small child. Dante could see that she was worried sick. He was ready to give his life now, just to keep his wife from crying. His heart was pounding so hard it seemed to crack his ribcage open and his blood was ruthlessly ripping his blood vessels into little pieces. Dante, shall we drink wine with grief? I want to forget myself a little, Lillian said in a nasal voice, and wiped away her tears with her palm. Lie down. I'll get everything ready and bring it here, he answered and went into the kitchen. It was necessary to feed Lillian and to do everything possible and impossible to somehow calm her down and get her out of this deplorable condition. We had to get rid of the negative emotions and give her hope that the bad streak was over. Miles dropped his daughter off outside the house, wished her luck, and pulled out his phone to call Esme. Hi, how are you, he asked a routine phrase and prepared to hear the usual okay, but heard nothing, Esme, where have you gone, can you hear me? He continued in an agitated voice. Yes, yes, I'm fine, she replied calmly, and Miles heard a man's voice on the phone. At first he thought it was the television. But then he decided to ask anyway. Do you have company? Yeah, it's my neighbor. My faucet blew out. And Caleb is helping me put it back in its place. So how's he doing, said Miles grudgingly. Somewhere in the back of his mind he became jealous. It was sickening in his throat to think of her now alone in the apartment with some stranger's man. Maybe we'd better get a specialist in, he suggested cautiously, hoping that she would not refuse his help, but would graciously agree and gladly accept his offer. Thank you, but there's no need. Caleb is almost finished, she replied and was silent. I'll be right there, Miles replied after a brief pause and disconnected the call just in case, lest Esme turn on his red light. Miles dashed over to her when the faucet was already safely repaired and the neighbor was sitting in the kitchen drinking tea. Good evening, Miles looked at Caleb with an appraising look. I wanted to grab him, push him out, and say thank you for your help. No one else needed his services. You shouldn't have bothered. Caleb did everything himself, didn't have to call an emergency crew, Esme smiled at Caleb. It's nice to have such wonderful neighbors, Miles muttered wryly and smiled crookedly, too. Caleb set the mug on the table. Thanks for the tea. Anything you need, I'm always here to help. Do you work as a plumber on this lot? Quipped Miles again, determined to humiliate his neighbor. No, I'm a senior researcher. I work in a research institute, he replied calmly, ignoring Miles's sarcastic words, and went on his way out. What handy researchers we have nowadays. I wonder, said Miles grudgingly as the guest left. Why would you do that? The man helped me for nothing. I'm very grateful to him, Esme objected, flapping her eyelashes. I wonder if your neighbor is married, Miles interrupted her speech. Who cares if he's married or not? I'm certainly not getting married anytime soon, Esme replied and grinned crookedly. Yeah, yeah, I know, Miles squinted and tapped his fingers nervously on the tabletop, so, he said clearly in a voice that could not stand objection. And Esme got goosebumps from that voice. She looked at him frightened with her eyes wide open, no male intruders. No electricians, no plumbers, no one I'll ever see here again, he said menacingly, trying to show with all his appearance that he would not tolerate third-party interference. I don't quite understand you, she questioned in surprise. Get your things together. I'm asking you out. 
Unexpectedly to himself, Miles replied loudly. The words jumped out of him, somehow unexpectedly. And as soon as he heard himself, he realized that he had done everything right. He had wanted to ask her out for a long time, but he hesitated. He was afraid of the condemnation of friends, relatives, and just good friends. But when he saw this neighbor, he decided not to hide anymore. It was necessary to mark his relationship, to open up and try to warm his icy heart. Since his divorce from his wife, no one had ever made him feel as warmly as this little girl. What date? What do you mean? Miles, you must have forgotten that I'm pregnant, Esme babbled. She folded her arms across her chest and pressed her lips together into a tight band. Showing with all her appearance that she was not thrilled with what she heard and had no intention of following his orders. Go pack. Where to? She asked without stopping to wonder, are you kidding now? No, I'm more serious than ever. Please don't ask unnecessary questions. Just trust me. I'm sure you won't regret it, he held out his hand to her. Esme stared at it for a few seconds, then hesitantly reached out his miles immediately intercepted it with his hands and drew Esme to him. That's better. I don't like to be disobeyed, he whispered softly in her ear. May I ask where we're going? Esme asked him hesitantly in the car. But Miles did not respond to her questions. He drove the car confidently and took small steps toward his intended destination. The car stopped outside the restaurant. Miles helped Esme out of the car. He took her by the arm and they went inside together. A waiter showed them into the booth, and the first thing that caught Esme's eye were the huge panoramic windows. The view of the city at night from the height of the 20th floor was simply stunning and mesmerizing. Esme went to the window and could not take her eyes off this beauty. Millions of different lights were shining on all sides, this picture was breathtaking and uplifting. Do you like it? Miles put his arm around her waist and pressed her back against his chest. Very pretty, she turned her head and looked into his eyes. Miles took her hand and escorted her to her seat, and he sat across from her. He ordered the waiter the food of his choice and watched her reaction to all that was going on carefully with his side eye. Can we talk, he asked with a smile when they were finally alone. And without waiting for an answer, he began the conversation himself, are you surprised? Not at all, she murmured, as she continued to stare at him with a perplexed look. I think I'm in love, he suddenly heard his own hoarse voice. Is this a joke, Miles? What's this all about? What kind of joke is this, he sighed heavily and leaned back on the sofa. I propose we try living together, he said in a confident tone, making it clear that he would not take no for an answer. No, I can't. That's not what I have to think about right now. In case you haven't forgotten, I'm going to have a baby soon. Is that what you want? Raise other people's children, said Esme firmly. It's not like I'm taking you straight to the wedding. I'm suggesting we be together. We're adults, I think we can find common ground, Miles suddenly hesitated. No, I don't want to. This is ridiculous, wailed Esme, you go from extreme to extreme. Every time, I'm at a loss to know what to expect from you, she went on saying, leaving no chance for Miles to say anything, no, no, and again no. Minting every word, she said confidently. All right, I heard you, Miles sighed heavily, we'll have a nice quiet dinner now, and then I'll take you home. Just give me your word that you'll think hard about my offer, Miles looked into her eyes and smiled. It's just all very sudden. I need to think hard and come to my senses. Take me home, please, Esme spoke quietly, afraid to look her companion in the eye. Lillian woke up close to lunchtime. Her head was a little sore. She remembered last night's circus performance, where she herself was the lead actress. All evening Dante had been soothing her, pleasing her, saying beautiful and warm words. Lillian stretched out in bed. Deceiving her husband had proven easy. She mentally thanked the stars that had aligned in a very special way and helped her to carry out her plan without any obstacles. Lillian turned on her phone and saw a missed call from her father. She immediately dialed Miles' number. Hello, Dad, you called me? 
wanted to know how your evening went last night? Did it work out for you? He grinned. It all worked out. Dante almost cried, reassuring me. At times I even felt sorry for him, she grinned. Lillian, I suggested yesterday that Esme move in with me and try to live together. Her daughter froze with her jaw dropped and was speechless for a while. You made that foolishness a reality after all, she interrupted the brief silence and sighed heavily, well, daddy, I'll accept whatever choice you make. Though I'm not thrilled to hear it, Lillian replied, barely moving her numb lips. And when are you going to introduce me to your stepmother? She teased her father sneeringly. Don't start, Lillian. And take your time. Please take care of your personal life. Start making babies with your husband instead of going to different phone parties. I heard you, daddy, she interrupted him, you were right about the kids. We've got to get to the bottom of that. Good for you, my husband did it for you, she quipped ironically. Lillian, no one can know it's your husband's child. For everyone, Esme is carrying my baby under her heart. And no one can claim him. I hope you heard me. In fact, that's what I wanted to talk to you about. Miles was about to press the button and disconnect, but Lillian asked a question he didn't know the answer to himself. Dad, what's it all going to look like? Explain it to me. My husband is the father of your child. His ex is my stepmother. Does this all kind of go out of my head? Lillian was abruptly silent, but Miles was in no hurry to answer her question, Dad, why aren't you talking? You got us all mixed up in this foolish adventure. How are we going to see each other on holidays now, go to each other's birthdays? She continued to inundate her father with her tricky questions. Lillian, first of all, this is not a phone call. And second of all, let's not overthink each other. I don't know the answers to your nasty questions myself. I do know one thing. I'm magnetically attracted to this woman, and I can't help it," he said grudgingly. There was an oppressive silence in the receiver again. Everyone was thinking about something else. And how did she feel about your proposal? She must have been jumping to the ceiling with happiness, Lillian didn't even recognize her own voice, and it wasn't surprising. Her mouth went sharply dry and it was even hard to breathe as soon as she imagined the picture. She's thinking about it for now, but I think she's just putting a price on herself. I just don't leave her much choice, Miles grinned. I see. What if she still loves Dante? Haven't you thought about that? What if he hasn't forgotten her, especially since she's expecting a child from him? What if they start looking at each other behind our backs? That would be hilarious. Lillian asked the questions he feared most. These thoughts had been tearing his soul into small pieces for a long time. No, he was not afraid of hardship, but most of all Miles was afraid of cheating and lying behind his back. He still couldn't forget how he had been involved in a triangle with his ex-wife and her lover. He would not live through such an embarrassment again, Miles had had enough of the condemnation from friends and relatives. Lillian, let's keep it down. Your Dante is not the only man on earth. I think Esme put him out of her mind as soon as she found out about his cheating. At any rate, I didn't see that she suffered for it, Miles answered her in a husky voice and turned off the phone. Miles could not continue this conversation any longer. How many times had he given himself his word that he would not see Esme, that he should throw her out of his calm and measured life? But a few days would pass and he would drive to her house like a snot-nosed boy, sit in the car for hours, and then, cursing to himself, go up to the apartment. Dante stepped into the elevator and saw Esme. She was standing there looking for something on her phone. Hi, he said hello, and Esme shifted her gaze to him. Hi, she replied and turned her attention back to her phone. How's your health, he asked unabashedly. Esme looked at him and could not think of anything to say to him. But as luck would have it, all thoughts slipped out of her head at once. She just kept silent, pretending to be too busy texting on her phone. Fortunately, the elevator stopped, and she walked quickly to her office. Dante followed, scrutinizing her with his gaze. Now that Lillian had lost a child, it was just unbearably painful for him to meet his ex-wife. 
and it was necessary for his father-in-law to buy this very enterprise. Seeing Esme every day was incredibly difficult. And images of his happy and serene life flashed in my mind. When it was possible to consult with Esme, not being shy to tell about his fears and failures. Every day he became more and more convinced that he had made a monstrous mistake when he divorced Esme. Yesterday, after talking to Lillian, when she informed him that Esme was going to live with his father, Dante tossed and turned all night. Several times he got up to smoke, went out on the balcony for some fresh air. Dante hadn't expected such a reaction from himself, hadn't thought he would feel so bad about the news. As much as he tried to show Lillian his indifference to everything that was happening, his behavior showed that Dante had not yet recovered from his past. And today he saw Esme again, and his heart began to pound so that he could plug in sensors to generate electricity. Dante was not in the mood all day, and somehow he made it to the end of the day. The man went out to the parking lot, got into his car, and was about to pull out of the parking lot when he noticed his father-in-law's car. Dante shut off the engine, got out of the car, and approached Miles. He held out his hand to greet him. They shook hands, Dante had just opened his mouth and was about to ask Miles a question when he saw Esme. She walked confidently toward her father-in-law's car, ignoring Dante, opened the passenger door and sat down next to Miles. His father-in-law waved at him, and the car started off. Dante stood there for a long time, staring after them. Where are we going? asked Esme. To your house, Miles answered briefly. You decided to help me clean my house today, she grinned. No, I decided to help you pack your things, he replied calmly. You're so sure I'll go along with it? Of course, I just won't leave you any choice. Would you like a drink? Miles asked solicitously and pointed to a bottle of pomegranate juice with his eyes, they say it's very healthy. Esme didn't have time to respond before Miles picked up the bottle and handed it to her. Have a cold one bought it especially for you. Esme stared at the bottle of juice and mentally considered how best to begin the conversation. While she was thinking, Miles was watching the road closely. Is everything okay? He asked and looked at her. I didn't agree to the move. Miles coughed sharply, as if choking on her answer. Esme gently patted him on the back with her palm. Thank you, he thanked. What can I do to get you to agree, to believe me? I opened my soul to you, by the way, I confessed my love, he continued in a low, husky voice. I am afraid of you, of your daughter, of my ex-husband. I don't fit into your triangle. I'm sorry. You have me now, and I won't let you get hurt. No one would dare hurt my woman. I promise you that, he said in a calm, judicious tone, not even raising his voice. Esme blushed involuntarily, clutching her hands to her cheeks, which burned like rascasm iron. What if you get sick of me fast? Will you move me home again? She decided to ask the question that had stuck in her mind as soon as Miles revealed his feelings to her. I don't think so. Then why do I think so? I think I've been looking for you all my life. I want to sleep with you, have breakfast with you in the morning. I want to adopt the baby you carry under your heart. I want you to always be there for me." Miles drove confidently to Esme's house, and was sure that tomorrow at work, he would take her already from his home. I take it that your silence is a sign of agreement, he smiled. Well, let's give it a try, Esme said faintly. She bit her lower lip and rolled her eyes, because she didn't expect to say those words out loud herself. Esme turned away from Miles and stared out the side window. She was embarrassed and uncomfortable, her cheeks burning. It seemed that from shame, she was about to turn into a smoldering coal that was burning down in a fire and would soon turn to ash. Why had she even agreed to this rash move? How would it all look from the outside? Okay, there's nowhere else to go, maybe in a week, he'll move me back, Esme reassured herself, afraid to even turn her head and look at Miles. Are you hungry? Why don't we stop in and have dinner and then quietly pack your things?" Miles asked in an affectionate voice and shifted his gaze to her. All right, Esme could barely get it out of her. Miles parked the car outside the restaurant, unlocked the doors, and turned to Esme. 
Come on, I'll feed you. Let's go, she whispered. Esme got out of the car. Miles held out his hand to her. Without thinking, she gave him hers. They held hands and walked into the restaurant without paying attention to their surroundings. The waiter showed them to an empty table. Miles seated her in a chair and sat across from her. Why are you so unhappy, said Miles with a smile, scrutinizing her with his eyes and gasping at her embarrassment. I don't know, she replied, fluttering her eyelashes. Well it's not like I'm going to eat you. I'm not a cannibal, I don't feed on people, he continued his tortured questioning. Are you still going to be embarrassed of me? I don't know, she moaned softly. Miles was pleased with himself. He didn't coddle Esme and showed right away who was boss in the house. Living together would bring them closer together, she would get used to him and stop being shy, she would realize that he was not her enemy. And then he will marry her, make her the rightful mistress of his heart. And let everyone know that he has the woman he loves and the mother of his child. Even though Esme was very hungry, the food just wouldn't go down her throat, and she felt a little nauseous. Still, she convinced herself and ate everything the waiter brought. She ate just machine, because she had to feed the little person inside her. You try to take only the essentials. We'll buy the rest, Miles put his palm over her hand and looked at her fondly. The waiter brought out a terminal, typed in the right amount, and Miles affixed his card. Let's go pack, he smiled at her again and got up from the table. Let's go, she smiled sweetly back at him and began to get up. Once they arrived at Miles' house, he took her by the hand and gave her a tour of the house. Then he escorted her into a room decorated in light beige tones, set down a bag of her belongings. This is our dressing room, you and me. This is the door to the bathroom, he calmly explained everything to her. Esme sorted through her things and arranged them in the dressing room. She was stalling as long as she could to get some distance from tonight and by some time before she and Miles were in the same bed. Are you going to be long? He walked up to her, put his arm around her waist, pressed her against his chest, and kissed the top of her head gently. With a decisive movement he took from her the dress she was trying to hang on her shoulder and put it on the shelf. He picked her up in his arms and carried her into the bathroom. Right with her clothes on, he put her in the shower stall. But I'm in my clothes, Esme mumbled. That's okay, Miles replied seriously. He went into the stall with her and turned on the warm water. He pressed her against the wall, lifted her arms above her head, and kissed her. Dante didn't feel like going home at all. Lillian had been staring at him all morning anyway, trying to get him to talk seriously. He did not want to hear her accuse him of loving her again, of living only for her father's money. Getting drunk wasn't an option either. When he was drunk, his sense of justice and self-respect increased. He could say all sorts of nasty things to her. Esme was on his mind. How quickly she found a new beau. She has become so important, she doesn't even want to talk. Dante thought about it and didn't notice when he entered the apartment. Lillian was sitting in her home clothes on the couch, holding a glass of wine in her hand. Oh. My husband showed up, she said in a sarcastic tone and gave him a head-to-toe appraising look. What are we celebrating, he sighed heavily, barely restraining himself from turning around and leaving the house. Three guesses, she grinned, and her smile didn't bode well. I can't even imagine, he replied and loosened his tie, do we have anything to eat? I'm hungry as a wolf, he said as calmly as possible. We have a refrigerator full of delicacies of all kinds. Bring them here. We'll celebrate a farewell service together. Did someone die, he asked in a worried voice. Our love for each other is dead. I realized that clearly today, she wiped away a tear. Well, what did you realize? Don't get yourself worked up. Get that nonsense out of your head. You know I don't need anyone but you, continued Dante, barely restraining himself from venting his emotions and sending her away, slamming the door on the other side. Why did I ever get involved with you? Getting you out of the family was a bad idea. Nothing good came of it anyway, Lillian grinned bitterly and took a sip from her glass, 
I realized that tonight and decided to break up with you. Lillian, can we talk tomorrow? Such matters are not decided on a drunken head, Dante said grudgingly, and opened the closet to change his clothes. To his surprise, there was none of his clothes in the closet. He looked at his wife in surprise, Lillian, where are my things? I already put them all in the bags so you don't have to bother, she laughed and pointed her hand to the bags that were in the corner. Dante looked at her and couldn't tell if she was joking or telling the truth. Lillian, let's dispense with your jokes. I'm tired at work. And here you start, he said in a tired voice. And that, my dear, is no joke. You're going to take your bags that you came to me with and leave this house forever. I didn't find myself in a dumpster to hold on to a man who doesn't love me. An amazing story, isn't it? Thank you for listening till the end. I sincerely hope that you truly enjoyed it. Don't forget to subscribe to the channel and rate this video. See you in the comments and in new releases.